four years before Castlevania Symphony of the Night would descend upon the PlayStation to bring us what is a man? A new genre of gaming, later to be dubbed by the fans as Metroidvania, Konami, back when it used to make games, would dabble with the style of gameplay in the most unexpected of places. On the original black and lime brick, the Game Boy, with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 Radical Rescue. While not a full-on Metroidvania-style game, or I guess a Metroid-style game considering the era, Radical Rescue is much more linear and considerably harder to backtrack in compared to what most of us would expect from the genre today. Though it still has that spirit and was leaps and bounds ahead of its handheld predecessors. The days of just slowly walking to the right and smacking enemies as they flank you were gone to give rise to exploration, light puzzle solving, and turtles with unique abilities that are actually necessary for progression. And as soon as you pop this one in, the game hits you with its biggest twist. We've got to save April! And I bet she's in another castle too. But it's not just April that needs saving this time around. It's also Splinter. <gasps> But more importantly, Leonardo, Dantello, and Raphael have been captured as well, leaving rescuing the squad up to the party animal himself, Michelangelo. So our adventure begins with Mikey storming the enemy stronghold. And holy shell, what a glow up! Just look at our boy! No more bobbleheads, no more chunk, no more stiffness, and really, it just doesn't look as half-assed as before. I mean, just look at these jump kicks side by side. And yes, I will fully admit that these are far less expressive than in previous outings. I don't care, I still think they are the coolest looking turtles of the 8-bit era. And yes, I am including the NES games in that. Man, if only they were in color. In fact, the entire game looks great for the era, especially for handhelds, with lots of detail in the environments and cool looking enemies. Especially the bosses, who are actually not the usual suspects you'd expect to see in a Turtles game. No Rocksteady, no Bebop, not even Krang. Instead, you get these weirdos. And aside from Dirtbag, I really don't remember any of these guys. But apparently they got toys, so I guess that's good enough. And besides, variety is nice. The music is also fantastic with its fun and upbeat tunes, which are great for action and exploration. Plus, it's got a pretty menacing pre-boss fight theme. And the actual boss fight music itself being the standout in my opinion. But before we ever even encounter any of the big guns, we find ourselves outside what is essentially a giant underground foot soldier base, with enemies actually patrolling the grounds, as opposed to just hurling themselves at you like they did in previous games. We also find that we aren't just limited to a single plane to walk on. Trying out all the buttons... So many combinations. We find that we have a basic attack, a crouch attack, which actually feels a tad bit delayed to me, though maybe I just have lousy reaction time. And of course, one shell of a jump. Boosting up to four to five times the height of our turtles, easily allowing us to infiltrate the trees, where the foot soldiers are actually also on the prowl. But they are extremely weak, and a simple smack from our nunchucks or a jump kick to the face will put them down. Easy. Jumping feels tight with short hops and long jumps. Especially so when compared to the weirdness that was TMT2 back from the sewers. But we still need one more little trick to get into that base. Helicopter mode. Jumping and pressing jump again will allow Mikey to close gaps as he essentially glides down. And he is able to let go of this at any time for faster falls if he needs to dodge or attack. Though, be warned, he is defenseless while hovering. Once inside, it's really only a matter of time before we come to our first crossroads. And now is the perfect time to check out what makes this a pseudo metroidvania. Pressing select will bring up our map screen and <laughs> we have got a lot of ground to cover, with our main objective being to reach each of these dots on the screen. Though, if you're playing on the Cowabunga Collection, and considering the rarity and price of this game, I assume most of you will be, you have the option to turn on enhancements, which will change the dots into actual icons. Not that it really changes much, but I mean, it's cool. And for the record, I am playing this on the Cowabunga Collection, though I didn't use the enhancements in my run. Yeah, no, I'm not just clicking these buttons for show. 
You think this might be why people don't trust game reviewers anymore? Once you get a bit further in, the map screen will also be where you can find the password, which obviously you're gonna need for when you inevitably die. This game can be pretty rough. But I do want to share a neat little trick I figured out along the way. So, the password system in this game is kinda weird. It updates on your map screen every time you complete an objective, and will show up at the game over screen. However, the password will actually save how many lives you have as well, meaning if you use the last password you receive at game over, you're gonna start back with no lives. It's kinda dumb. So, pro tip, place a 2 at the end of every password to start with 2 continues. Or you could just use save states. That works too. But hey, don't hesitate to screw with the passwords a bit if you want. I missed a few power-ups along the way, but was still able to trick the game into thinking that I got them by messing with the numbers it gave me. Psh, hell, as a kid I even figured out how to skip the first boss and immediately have my second turtle rescued. Speaking of which, the start screen shows how many turtles you still have left to save. So, what are you guys in for? But, once you rescue the others, it's also how you swap between them. But, unlike turtles on the NES, all the turtles share a health bar, and for the most part, they play exactly the same. No special treatment for you this time, Donnie. The only real difference is each of the turtles' unique abilities, which actually makes saving them more of the equivalent to gaining a new power-up in Metroid than it is to actually gaining a new character, as each ability is primarily used for reaching new areas, and not so much for combat. Leo can drill through rocks, Raph is a crappy version of the Morph Ball, and Donnie can climb up walls. And that last one's kind of weird, because you'd think it would be like Raph's thing to climb walls since he's got, you know, size, the perfect tools for digging into dirt and stone and... Sticks are not good for climbing. Ironically, Mikey's hover jump is actually the most useful skill in combat, making him the best turtle in the game, which is actually pretty rare, but I like it. Using these abilities, you make your way through the map from objective to objective, collecting power-ups like health containers, keys, and pizza. Though, don't let that three item slot bar at the bottom fool you, you can only carry one pizza at a time. <laughs> Ooh boy, you are gonna need it. This game can be rough. Enemies slowly get tankier and start attacking from some of the most annoying and cheap angles. Not to mention all the cheap shots from enemies that you will not be able to see coming. It can really get frustrating at times, but never so much that it's deal breaking. Time for another pro tip. The full pizzas respawn every time you enter the screen. So once you've grabbed one, you can leave the screen and come back, grabbing a second one to give you full health. Though, despite the strength of the enemies increasing and the bosses hitting hard, you never actually get any stronger, only really having the possibility of gaining more health, which again, being more of a pseudo Metroidvania game, if you miss along the way, you're gonna struggle to go back and find it later if you need it. There's no real teleports or shortcuts in this game, not helped by the fact that a lot of the obstacles are just plain cheap. Look at this laser, for example. You cannot dig through here without taking a hit. What the shell? And nowhere is the challenge in this game more apparent than in the boss fights. That's right, sitting just behind these walls that Shredder clearly contracted from Dr. Wily lies some of the hardest, most infuriating, brutal, and honestly, best boss fights in the entire TMT franchise. Every single one of them requires you to memorize their patterns and figure out their tells just in order to stand a chance. They are tough. And not to spoil anything, but let's just say those Mega Man doors are a bit of a hint on how this game ends. And of course, to no surprise to anyone, Old Tin Grin is the final boss, and he is the hardest Shredder fight that I have ever faced but totally worth the challenge. This was absolutely one of those games that really got my adrenaline flowing and kept me on my toes, especially at the end. But just like the original NES TMNT, Radical Rescue was, and probably still is, a bit too difficult for the younger audiences that it was marketed to. And while definitely more forgiving than that game, thank you passwords, it still has shades of NES hard, which, may be a turnoff for many. But with the Kawabunga Collection offering save states and rewinds, plus a plethora of other great TMT games at an actual affordable price point, 
Now is the best time ever to test your metal with one of the most unique and radical TMD games ever made. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 The Radical Rescue comes highly recommended.